thank you for uh, for coming back. Uh, as I said to you before this break, things will accelerate from here. We're going to be talking to people about every single corner of this ecosystem, and you'll find one of every flavour, probably too many of every flavour, uh, and we expect you to be disoriented. So uh, that is normal transmission if you can't follow this thread. If you can follow this thread at the end of it, it is gold star um, because this content is uh, is very deliberately dense. Um, so that you can get a real sense of, of what's happening in every corner of the uh, of the country. Uh, my great pleasure um, to introduce Adriana to the stage. Uh, Adriana Bellotti is a community builder. She's done an extraordinary job over many, many years, uh, selflessly showing up, doing the things that everyone else hates, putting out chairs as well, and encouraging people to come along, um, giving people an opportunity to speak for the first time. Um, and uh, many, many people do appreciate what you do, Adriana, but I just have to say, Everyone should appreciate what you do. You have helped build this ecosystem at a time that no one else cared about it. So uh, other than that, it doesn't do much. Uh, I welcome Adriana to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Other than that, I do not do much. I don't sleep either. I'm one of those. Um, welcome, everyone, and welcome, Silvio, to Blockchain Week Australia 2022. Here we go. Hi, Silvio. How are you doing? Where are you Zooming from today? Like this. Glad to see you. Nice to see you too. He's zooming in from Boston, I think. Uh, all right, so since launching in 2019, Algorand is evolving into a robust layer one. It's carbon negative. It has ticked over 2,000 nodes. It has currently nearly 3 billion algos staked in its second governance period. I think we had 36,000 wallets voting on this period. Uh, very high voting participation rates. We have an ecosystem that is going so fast that for a community manager like me, it's very hard to keep up. So, Silvio, how has this journey been for you and what are your highlights as we approach the third mainnet anniversary? Hello, Australia. I think it, um, is, uh, this uh, trip uh, uh, has been great uh, and I think it is uh, um, very, very enjoyable and is also um, uh, lots of passion and lots of uh, work and, uh, and lots of actually new people that you meet and you find we have a, a joint interest in, in the entire community. So the highlights, you know, um, Algorand is very different in that uh, it's really a solved of this famous trilemma. I think of it is a um, I think that is in an highlight uh, in and of itself. So we are very proud also that our technology works. So we have been producing block after block after block every 4.4 seconds for the last uh, two years and a half without any interruption. I think that is also uh, something that to me is an highlight because uh, when the blockchain uh, is used for real application, uh, downtime and you know, over 12 hours every month, uh, uh, is not a good, right? So uh, maybe you can survive speculation uh, to have every blockchain down. If the blockchain is down, ah, I'll speculate tomorrow. But if there is something that real happens, then uh, you don't want to have a downtime. We are very proud of uh, our uh, high participation in governance, as you said. When uh, the functionalities, the toolings are in place, we are very proud of being green. In fact, we were designed to be green. And uh, we are actually proud, actually, of um, of our um, layer one uh, smart contracts. I, I really think that they are very easy to code, and they are very very cheap. So, if you and I want to exchange, you know, assets, I have an asset that you uh, that you want, and you have an asset that I want. We can swap them in less than four point four se four point uh, four second, and at the cost of one fraction of one cent. That is really what we need uh, in order um, 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 to really be ac accessible to the whole, whole, whole world. So I think that you know, when I look at all, um, all this, I think these are the highlights. You know, we are very proud of what we are doing, and uh, and now we have to do enter into the next uh, phase. Yes. Yeah, so um, Algorand Pure Proof of Stake, as you mentioned, has cracked the blockchain trilemma. It delivers consistent transaction output with speed and decentralization. Uh, but when you design economies of scale, you usually require some trade-offs. Did you have to make any trade-offs in designing Algorand? No. 
Because, so, <laughs> you have uh, trade offs. So, what are we trading? So, usually you trade essentially um, um, scalability for security or for decentralization. We don't want to wait. In some sense, you know, it seems obvious that you know, the more people participate, right, you know, the slower it gets. Well, so, somehow that is a false uh, assumption, but we have to do another architecture that really bypassed these impossibilities. I don't believe much, uh, Adriana, in impossibilities, or to correct myself, I believe some things in life are impossible. I believe that is good, too, because if everything is possible, we lose interest. But the, the impossible things are much, much fewer. And so all this uh, impossibility of scalability and security and decentralization was actually um, a crap. So the real trade-off, if you want, is between free time versus work. Then I trade-off <laughs> in favor of work because I'm a workaholic and the reason I, I like it because I like the people I work with and uh, I like, you know, uh, what I'm doing. And uh, I think that, um, so in some sense, uh, yes, it's a trade-off, but uh, it's not a sacrifice at all. I think we're all making this trade-off, like as Steve says, he doesn't sleep, I don't sleep, many of us don't sleep, it's because we are all doing things like this and having so much fun while at it, right? Exactly. If you want to uh, go far, if you want to travel uh, far, uh, you know, you better pack your passion first. And if you have passion, you don't need sleep, <laughs> you don't need that. And then you don't need that rest and downtime. Indeed. Um, so Algorand is designed to not fork. What, why is that an important feature? Well, you know, first of all, we have to realize that uh, most of blockchain forks because they don't agree on the next block. So they have a drip, drip, drip phenomenon that sometimes you get this fork. So people say, well, so what? Eventually one fork, uh, one branch will disappear and only one will survive. You know, I have a different opinion about this, Adriana, because, you know, take something like as simple as a, an NFT. What is an NFT? Is the digital representation of a unique good. Okay, they are all the range right now. Excellent, they should be. But assume there is this so-called unique good and there is a fork and you own the good in one branch and I own in the other. Now, a third person comes and wants to buy. Should he buy from you or should he buy from me? Or should he just wait that the fork resolves? So now, the notion of a fork is really a technology bag that if you use the bad technology, you fork, but you know, the semantics of an NFT is inextricably linked to having a unique chain that gives you no ambiguity. Otherwise, there is no uniqueness. Can we have two Mona Lisas? I don't think so. <laughs> Otherwise, what's unique about the Mona Lisa? So that is one thing. The other stuff is really the certainty. When you see a block added to the Algorand blockchain, if that block contains a payment made to you, ship the goods. Why? Because you have been paid. You don't have to wait maybe a block, two, three, four, ten, when enough is enough that you can be confident that the block will stay on the chain. You know, anytime that uh, you have a, a, a really um, a risk, risk means more expenses, risk means, you know, all kinds of bad things, putting collaterals, and, and risk has costs. And so that is, we want to have a very, very low cost for having a, the blockchain of the world. and. Uh, um, the, the ability of forking is a bad uh, idea and is only due to um, outdated technology. So instant finality is a thing. It exists. It exists here right now. All right. At this cipher last year, you spoke about your vision for accessibility and the importance of environmental considerations when building large scale systems. Why are those two aspects so important to you personally? The bigger the system you want to live along is, the better, the more uh, um, um, environmental friendly you ought to be. So um, that is really, there is no, no long-term plan that is not sustainable. It has to be self-sustainable. And so we have one planet, right? And we all live in it and we want to continue to live happily in it. 
And so somehow this, you know, sustainability is really key. And by the way, it's not only a question of polluting the, the planet. It's, if you really want to be sustainable, that means that you, the costs are low. Because even the cost of heat that is dissipated, somebody has to first pay for the heat and then you have to pay to cool it down. So that means it brings up a cost. So um, nothing really right now that is not uh, um, um, eco-friendly as the right to exist because uh, or we can exist uh, favorably will burn out and uh, is not going to continue for long. Yes. Uh, okay. So the tech team at Algorand Inc. has delivered some pretty important updates in the last 12 months. And they include the launch of the Algorand virtual machine and most impo importantly, recently, uh, state proofs, which will bring quantum resistance to Algorand. Could you talk to us a little bit more about how state proofs will work? Oh, great. So, yeah, state proofs uh, give, you know, as a side effect, quantum resilience. And by the way, if you want to take the long view, the blockchain is here to stay for long uh, once we, uh, the individuals that built it are, are gone. And, and so somehow you don't want that somehow when um, quantum computers exist, you can hack the chain backwards. The chain has to be really a ground truth that is forever. So that is very important. So, but the state proofs essentially represent a compact statement of the entire blockchain. So think of it in the case of Algorand is to say, the following thing is true and is backed up by the signature of, say, 80% of the stake of Algorand. You go, wow, that's very good. But, you know, as we get more and more decentralized, 80% of the stake is going to represent thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, etc., uh, uh, of uh, signatures, of digital signature. And so you have a really to certify something that the blockchain as a whole wants to declare true, which is very, 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 very long. So what the, the magic of mathematics is that you start with something very long, you compress it to something very short and very easy to inspect. So a state proof is really a statement that represents compactly and easy to inspect the will of this overwhelming majority of the state of a stake in, in, uh, in, uh, in Algorand. All right, so what is this is good, by the way, is that uh, it allows you to represent what is going on in the, in the Algorand chain to the outside. Because I really believe that no man is an island and no blockchain should be an island either. So you want to cooperate with other blockchains and they don't have the same consensus protocol that you do it's very hard to pass what is going on inside there unless you observe everything from the very beginning. So compact proofs, right? state proofs, what they really enables you to do is to say, hey, that's what is going on in Algorand and don't take it from me, it's the entire blockchain who backs this up. And so that is, a, is our passport to represent to the outside in a very unmistakable way what is the truth inside the Algorand chain. And that is essentially our hand extended to our chains to have decentralized token bridges rather than this flaky centralized bridge that you, know, you ship a, an asset on the other chain because maybe as a better tech or a better conditions on that point in time and then you worry, you know, you know is this asset coming back? Will the bridge be open? You know, <laughs> and, uh, um, a year from now. With a, a decentralized token bridge, this is not a problem. And and uh, uh, state proofs essentially enable decentralized token bridges. That's what we really need. Okay, so as a community champion, I thought it would be fitting to ask the community to submit some questions on Twitter. Uh, so I could select at least one to ask you. And a recurring topic um, on that conversation was privacy especially considering that governments are researching central bank, bank digital currencies and we are always talking about the implications of that from, from a citizen privacy point of view. And then Fred, our community champion in Brazil, would love to know your opinion on a privacy layer for Algorand. Is that something that's coming on? Absolutely. And in fact, actually, we are assembling and a great team and uh, we have uh, already some plans. We want to have uh, 
a layer of privacy and uh, and it's going to be first class uh, by the way it's going to be as innovative as uh, our consensus protocol too and it's going to be really private at this time but that's why it's important that we develop it uh, together with uh, the regulators and figuring out that you know, nobody has to doubt that making things opaque means that it's going to be a mayhem of uh, of uh, of uh, misdeeds so you really want to have both privacy and correctness at the same time that is the trick and it's another um, reconciling opposites that i can talk with is great at doing and that's what we want to have you know in algorithms so on one side you want to have complete privacy on the other side you want to have an iron plant guarantee that nothing wrong is going to happen under the curtain of, of privacy i'm a big believer in privacy and by the way whether uh, uh, people know it or not, some of the reasons for which we have solved the HLM, but we are actually so fast, as an element of privacy, because privacy is the quintessential defense against an enemy, and when the enemy cannot see what you are doing, can has a very um, uh, much less chance to hurt you. And uh, somehow hidden under the hood in Algorand, there is an important element of privacy, and we'll add also privacy to the transaction themselves. All right, what's next? Privacy is on the horizon. What else is next? Well, you know, I believe that you know, another next thing we are going to have is really uh, co-chains and decentralized uh, bridges, right? You know, I really, I cannot, um, why? Because I really think that the future is not going to be one chain wins them all, but it's going to be um, correctly um, a dozen um, Maybe we don't need the thousands, <laughs> somehow a fair number of chains because each one of us is good or is better than others at certain things. And so we are going to have, you know, multiple chains, you know, and, and uh, Algorand will be one of them. But we have to really bridge to the others, right? And so we want to uh, enable that um, assets to flow where they want to go for a particular uh, transaction and we have a guarantee that go back. I think decentralized bridges guarantee the following. That if you want to transport an asset from, say, the blue chain where you currently are to the green chain where you want to, your asset to go, at least temporarily, two things when are true, Adriana. You trust the blue chain because you keep your assets there right now, and you trust the green chain because you want to go there too and you don't need to trust anybody else. Right now, instead, you find that there is one individual or five individuals who says, don't worry, transport with, with security and no concerns, because we, the club of five, will guarantee that the bridge will keep it up for you. The club of five? Who is the club of five? Decentralization is important. And so we cannot have the decentralization inside the chain and then interchain we have the club of five who somehow guarantee that our assets can go there and come back now even if it's asset of club of five put some money to say oh this is a bond if we do something wrong you can confiscate our money this money is peanuts relative to the value that the two chain they want to bridge represent so if you have the trillions of dollars on one chain and trillions of dollars on the other chain, there is no assets that this club of fives may have that they can guarantee you that you'll anything at all. When, when, when things are so big, you know, there is no financial guarantees of a few individuals. You must have a decentralized bridge. That's what is coming. And, um, and the other aspect that uh, is coming too, I think, is this co-chain that is another aspect of privacy in some sense that is um, uh, to have you know a separate chain that you know is uh, in invisible from the outside as uh, the same you know consensus protocol and decentralization inside but somehow as the ability to interoperate with other co chain or the main chain as if we were uh, a, a transparent node that everybody can see and and so that is i think is uh, an important part of the tech and that also what we're going to have and by the way, what we're going to have too, Adriana, is that we are going to improve our performance, which is already great, but we are going to improve it by a factor of 10 first and beyond that in a, in a, in a second step. And the reason we want to do it is that we see 
that um, the blo our blockchain, which is always designed to be a transactional blockchain, is going to be adopted more and more and more. And so we want to be able to handle, handle not only the traffic of today, but the traffic of tomorrow and that uh, the uh, of end of the days are following tomorrow. So, co-chain, performance, and uh, privacy indeed. Amazing. All right, yesterday was uh, day one for Blockchain Week, and the conversations converged around the mainstream moment. So, this is what many of us in the blockchain industry um, uh, think as blockchain coming of age, right? Um, so, what does that mean for you and Algorand, and especially in the Australian context, what would you like to say for the Australian community? First of all, you know, what blockchain really does very well is that unite us immediately. Everybody's your neighbors. So, um, um, somehow it's such a beautiful country, Australia, but geographically so far away that I have to really think when I'm going to have a trip to go to Australia and back. But on the blockchain, we are all neighbors. In 4.4 seconds, you can transact with me and anybody else. So I really think that this ability to have a common truth is really a first for, the, for humanity. And the ability not only to communicate, but to know that what you hear is the same thing that everybody else is here, that we are really have a, a common knowledge is a fantastic gift. And the ability of transacting with security with people you barely know, and maybe never met in person is really a powerful, a powerful incentive to interact more. And right now, that's what we have to do, and to um, and to do, really have massive interaction. You need the scalability, but you also need extreme efficiency. We you want to have transactions that really cost of a fraction of a cent, because when they cost one dollar, ten dollars, hundred dollars, we can be very cavalier about what is ten bucks. Well. In some part of the world, unfortunately, there, there is a lot of money. Or even in, in, a, in a developed part of the world, when you want to transact a very high volume, many, many, many transactions, or $10 is, is unthinkable. A fraction of a cent right now, in my opinion, is what it is. So then the, the thing is that somehow this is a triumph in some sense of um, human spirit. The blockchain is a uh, is a is a really you know our friend, uh, um, 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 but is also a triumph of uh, actually human technology because somehow we humans <laughs> became more humans when we formed our first tool, and our tools are going to make more humans and put them in charge uh, of um, of, uh, of um, safe and frequent um, really interaction. I think that's what the world needs right now. Indeed. All right. Thank you so much, Silvio, for joining us. Adriana, Australia. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.